We're, we're continuing chapter 13, linear regression. And so far, there were three videos or even four involving the correlation coefficient, the theory behind it, and the, but now we're going to continue the discussion of the, in, of the interpretation of the correlation coefficient. And of course, the symbol for the correlation coefficient is R. Brian, if you don't mind just pointing the camera a little bit to the left here, I don't know if you can see that for a second. This is, of course, the formula for the correlation, so I'm not going to bother rewriting that. And this happens to be an example um, of the correlation. Uh, you also see you also see the R squared calculated, six, uh, six, 82 times 82 is 68, which is then changed by multiplying it by 100 or moving over to decimal place two positions, it becomes 68 percent. And what we're going to talk about now is what does that 68 percent mean? Whenever somebody tells you like 68 percent, the question that should go through your mind is 68 percent of what? What's 100 percent? What what does it mean to be 68 percent? So, so today we're having the second interpretation of the correlation, the first interpretation that is simply an index between uh, plus one and minus one. Now the second interpretation is calculating the R squared, which is expressed as R times R times 100%. Um, that's called the coefficient of determination, coefficient of determination. And the next few minutes, we're going to talk about what that means. In order to explain what the COVID, what the R squared, when you get a, an answer of, for example, 68%, what that means, I'd like to, uh, to sort of tell you, I uh, have to resort to a science, a science fiction type of a story. Imagine a planet where somebody's weight literally does not depend upon anything. It doesn't depend upon your age, like it does on Earth. It doesn't, dep doesn't depend upon your height. It doesn't depend upon your sex. It doesn't depend upon your age, as I mentioned, your, your parents' weight, your exercise, the calories you consume. All those things affect somebody's weight on Earth. But this science f fiction planet, there is nothing, nothing affects somebody's weight. Okay? Now, you walk over to the first person on that planet that you meet, and you ask him or her, I guess, I don't know if they're him and hers, whatever, uh, what is your weight? And the person says, 150 pounds. Okay? Now, then you walk over to the second person. Can you, somebody guess what that weight's going to be? What is the second person's weight going to be? Yes, Zagaro. Uh, the answer is it has to be 150, because if I told you a second ago that doesn't depend upon anything, so why would it change? If nothing, if nothing affects somebody's weight, then it would never change. Everybody would have exactly the same weight, 150, 150, 150. OK, so that's, of course, on. Now, what's the variation among those numbers? What's the variation among, or if I would calculate the variance of these numbers, what would the variance be of a bunch of numbers that are exactly the same? The answer would be 0, OK? so. On this particular planet, there's no variation in people's weight, so the answer has to be zero. The variance has to be zero. But now let's now let's turn to and place it back, please. Now let's turn to planet Earth. On planet Earth, there are many factors that influence somebody's weight. Somebody may weigh 150 pounds. Another person may weigh 120 pounds. Another person 135 pounds. 165 pounds. Everybody's weight's different. And therefore, what's the variance of those numbers? Zero or big or less than zero or bigger than zero? It can't be less than zero. It has to be. So in, on, and any time you collect data where something is influencing it, or let me, what I'm, I'm trying to say is another thing. The fact that the numbers are all different, or some of them are different, proves what? Can you put into English, what does it prove the fact that these numbers are not the same proves what? What's the logical deduction you can make from the fact that numbers are different? Yes. Well, that's the same. Just, re just repeating the, qu the statement. I'm saying the fact that not everybody has the same weight proves what logically? That something's if that's very good. That something's affecting it. So, this is for you. This is for John, and this is for uh, Mr. Mazzaro. For him, okay. So something's affecting it. So some, some brilliant scientist has the idea, what could be influencing that weight? He says, I think maybe somebody's height might influence their weight. 
So they say, okay, let's do a study. Let's, let's take people's height and weight, height and weight, height and weight, like 25 people or 100 people, or whatever, and six foot, one inch, five foot, seven inches, uh, six feet, zero inches, whatever, five feet, nine inches. So what they're trying to do, if you think about it, the fact that something, so maybe I should have, you know, I don't think the video take, picked this up. Um, John Sands said, the fact that numbers are different, the fact that there's a variation bigger than zero, which is the same thing, means that something's influencing those numbers. They wouldn't, if there's nothing influencing those numbers, they wouldn't change. So something's influencing, the question is what's influencing them, and of course we know many things influence somebody's weight. So somebody says, let's investigate the possibility that somebody's height influences somebody's weight. So they, 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 they collect some data, do the experiment, they calculate from these pairs of numbers, they calculate the R, and the R comes out, for, for, say for arguments, they comes out to 0.60. They calculate the R squared, which is 60 times 60, expressed as a percentage, which is 36%. Six times six is 36. And then, so th how do you interpret that 36%? And here, here, here as it goes. 36%, in other words, they're trying, what a scientist is trying to do when they collect an X variable, trying to predict a Y variable, not just a scientist, a marketing manager might want to figure out what's affecting the marketing changes, et cetera. They're trying to explain, it's called literally trying to explain the variance of the dependent variable. They're trying to explain why these numbers are changing. So they did all these calculations and they came up with this number and then what they're saying is, I can explain 36% of why these numbers are changing. I can explain 36% of the variance. So when you get a correlation of 0.6, which is pretty high, but when you square it, it looks smaller, that means you can explain 36% of the y variable. And how much is unexplained? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so 100 minus 36 is 64. 64 percent is unexplained. So what's, what, why, what's, how can you explain the other missing 64 percent? The answer is maybe there are other variables that affect, not just height. Height explains 36 percent. Maybe somebody's age, their sex, their exercise, their diet, their genetics, a whole bunch of other things that affect it. But, but height by itself explains 36 percent. Now, um, so to put this in writing, um, uh, in this particular example, you can say 36% of the variance of y, or is, can be explained explained by y's linear association with x. So if anybody asks you, what it, when we calculate an R squared, it comes out to like 75%. What does that mean? 75% of the variance of Y, whatever the, whatever the Y happens to be, can be explained by its association with X. That's it. That's the, that's the, main, that's the, main, the main way you interpret a correlation is by squaring it and then taking that little statement and realizing what you just calculated. Okay? Now, but does that prove that the, does that mean that the X has an impact on the Y? Maybe not. I'll show you. Now comes a third interpretation of where the x, where two variables, the, the x variable is going to be the amount of ice cream consumed per capita, and this is going to be the number of death by drowning. Per capita in, let's say, 100 random cities around the country. So you have one city, I don't know, New York. How much, is, of course you can't compare a giant city to a small city, so you gotta divide it by the number of people, so it's per capita. So let's say the average person uh, eats about, let's say per year, eats, I don't know, six pounds of ice cream. And how many people dr drown by drowning? It's like, say, one out of 100,000 people tr uh, die by drowning. So it's one out of, you know, whatever, one. And another city, the, um, they eat eight pounds of ice cream, and they have a 1.2 per 100,000 drowning. Another city eats three pounds of ice cream, and they only have a 0.7. And imagine these numbers continued, and imagine you change them into a scattergram. You have ice cream is the x, the death variable is the y, and if you graph it, you're gonna get something like this. 
And when you calculate the correlation, the correlation comes out to 0.99. Now, the fact that the correlation and the R squared comes out to 99 times 99